As of the 1st of January, 1955, a total of 333 hours and 24 minutes of flight time have been accumulated on the YB-52. The XB-52 has accumulated 446 hours and 40 minutes. These hours encompassed phases one, two, and three of the flight test program. During the past year, airplanes one, two, three, four, and seven were accepted by the Air Force. These now have been bailed to the contractor, Boeing Airplane Company, for flight test. On the 5th of August, 1954, the initial flight was conducted on production article number one. By October the 12th, it had accumulated 41 hours and 23 minutes of flight time. After that date, no flights were conducted. This was due to runway repairs and incorporation of instrumentation and modifications to the aircraft. On the 29th of December, the 16th production article left the factory. In the near future, flight testing is scheduled to begin on airplanes five and six. These flights will take place at the Air Force Flight Test Center. During the first nine months of 1954, the 16th Tactical Reconnaissance Squadron, Shaw Air Force Base, received a number of Martin RB-57As. The unit engaged in operational training and checkout of military air transport crews. Also, 1954 saw the beginning of operational suitability testing of the RB-57A. This was conducted by the Air Proving Ground Command at Eglin Air Force Base. During the period between October 1st and December 31st, the RB-57A Garden Gate modification was completed at the Glen L. Martin Company. All aircraft allocated to the 16th and 93rd Tactical Reconnaissance Squadrons, Shaw Air Force Base, have been received. RB-57s are now being prepared for assignment to the United States Air Force in Europe. Two advanced RB-57s were flown to Europe for use in briefing and checking out Air Force personnel. In the research and development program, phase four tests are completed on the BRB-57A. Presently, phase seven tests are approaching completion. On the 18th of June, 1954, first flights of the B-57B were conducted. The B is similar to the A, except for an extended bubble canopy. This affords better visibility for the pilot and navigator. Delivery has started of the B-57Bs to the training and tactical air commands. Phases four, six, and seven tests are underway. The B-57C, the first dual control version, has been produced and has passed the first article inspection. First flight was conducted on the 30th of December, 1954. Favorable comments were made by the Glen L. Martin chief test pilot in respect to landing the aircraft from the back seat. The flight was considered successful in all respects. By late October, 1954, the Convair B-58 mock-up had been revised to incorporate necessary changes. These changes provided minimum transonic drag rise and minimum supersonic drag. The former Siamese nacelles, located 13 feet outboard of the fuselage center line, were replaced by split nacelles. These are located outboard at 12 and 21 feet, respectively. The fuselage lines aft of the crew compartment were modified to provide better supersonic performance. This fuselage change increased the internal fuel capacity and permitted the elimination of external fuel tanks. During November and December of 1954, tests of a 1 scale model were conducted at NACA Langley. This attempted to provide further correlation of previous tests in the WADC and cooperative wind tunnels. All data are still being evaluated. Precise performance predictions will be available early in 1955. A power plant development engineering inspection was conducted at Convair late in October 1954. 
only minor alterations were required in the power plant installations. The major quantity of production drawings for the crew compartment have been released. Substantial tooling for this part of the B-58 has been completed. Definite contractual negotiations for the first 13 BRB-58 weapon systems are scheduled for early 1955. The BRB-66 series aircraft are designed to meet the bombing and reconnaissance requirements of the Tactical Air Command. The aircraft produced by the Douglas Aircraft Company has the same general appearance as the Navy's A3D. The first factory rollout of an RB-66A was on the 29th of May, 1954. Its swept wings have a span of 72 feet. Overall length is 75 feet, while the height is 24 feet. Its two J-71 Allison engines are capable of producing 9,570 pounds thrust each. This is developed under static sea level conditions. On the 28th of June, 1954, the first flight of an RB-66A was conducted. Its design performance on a typical mission includes takeoff weight of 78,000 pounds. This weight consists of a bomb load capacity of 10,000 pounds and a fuel load capacity of about 26,000 pounds. The aircraft has a combat radius of 974 nautical miles an average cruising speed of 469 knots and a target altitude of 40,300 feet. Total mission time is 4 hours and 19 minutes. The crew for the B and RB-66 consists of pilot, bombardier navigator and gunner. As of the 31st of December, three RB-66As have flown approximately 100 hours. This time has been devoted primarily to the investigation of aerodynamic characteristics and performance of the aircraft. During mid-December of 1954, the Phase II flight program was initiated. Over a year of operation with the F-100A Air Superiority Fighter has shown that its performance capabilities can be fully realized. However, service experience and North American's flight test program have disclosed two primary stability and control problems. The first was longitudinal control sensitivity at certain flight speeds. Second was an out-of-control snap roll occasionally experienced during abrupt rolls. These two problems contributed to the grounding of the airplane in November 1954. Control sensitivity has been under study for over a year. Extended wing tips and two mechanical gearing designs have been developed. Flight tests of these designs have shown great reduction in stick sensitivity. The second primary problem was snap rolling when abrupt aileron rolls were attempted. This was first noted in May 1954. In June, the manufacturer recommended a restriction on abrupt aileron rolls below Mach 0.95. Investigation began immediately. Flight test data from NACA high-speed research airplanes indicated that they too had this problem. It now appears that other supersonic airplanes have a tendency toward inadvertent snap rolls. Supersonic flight requires a long, slim, low-drag fuselage giving a high moment of inertia in pitch and yaw, with a much lower moment in roll. During rolls, high fuselage moments have a flyball effect, which overcomes the stabilizing force of the vertical fin. This discovery began an entirely new design criteria for supersonic aircraft. Usual methods of stability computation are inadequate for this problem. Computation was so complex that it required the use of REAC, an electronic brain, for solution. Data from REAC showed increased directional stability could overcome the inertia effect. A taller, 27% larger fin, which had been under design, was installed and tested. Recent flight test has shown much improved handling characteristics 
and appears to have eliminated the snap roll problem. Flight testing, the improved control systems, and the large vertical fin has shown very favorable stability and control qualities. The McDonnell F-101A is a Mach 1.5 aircraft being procured for the Strategic Air Command. It is designed as a vehicle for atomic stores. The first two articles were factory completed in St. Louis. These were airlifted, disassembled by two C-124s to the contractor's facility at the Air Force Flight Test Center. On the 29th of September, 1954, First flight was conducted on aircraft number one. Four F-101As are now flying. Flight tests have expanded the performance envelope to a level flight Mach number of 1.45 at 40,000 feet and an altitude of 51,500 feet. A preliminary Air Force flight evaluation has been conducted and the phase two flight tests are scheduled for early spring. To date, the major difficulty has been engine compressor stalls. Improved engines and controls are being provided in an attempt to solve this problem. The first phase of the F-101 Model 96 program has been completed on schedule by a joint effort on behalf of AFSWC, McDonnell Aircraft Corporation, and the Sandia Corporation. The fusing and firing phase is now in progress. Test vehicle is a B-47. Initial Model 96 drops from the F-101A are scheduled for mid-1955. A thermonuclear capability utilizing the F-101A with the Model 96 shape is currently under study. An extensive improvement program has been initiated for the Convair F-102A. This is due to the failure of the YF-102 to meet minimum Air Defense Command performance requirements. The program consists of drag reduction, weight reduction, and thrust improvement. The performance prototype of the F-102A has completed seven flights since its initial flight on the 20th of December, 1954. During the second flight, the aircraft was stabilized in level flight at 35,500 feet at Mach 1.18. These ratings were marked according to the pilot's instruments and chase plane reports. On the seventh flight, a climb to combat altitude at the predicted best climb and ceiling speed was attempted. At 51,600 feet, the climb was discontinued. The rate of climb was 1,500 feet per minute. At this point, engine rotor speed and engine temperature limitations were being exceeded. The pilot then discontinued this portion of the flight. These data indicates that the F-102A has met the predicted high speed and altitude performance requirements. This is a model of the Republic XF-103. This represents the configuration as of the completion of the extended Phase I program in September 1954. Major external changes are increased vertical tail, revised air inlet, and a change from rectangular to circular exhaust nozzle. One purpose of the XF-103 will be to determine the operational feasibility of a periscope for visual reference. This is to eliminate drag problems involved with conventional windshields. The periscope, combined with two side windows, is the pilot's only reference for visual flight in the first prototype airplane. Four well-known firms were awarded contracts to devise optical systems. Of the many systems studied, five different types were selected for further evaluation. These included both single and binocular lens systems, as well as a mirror arrangement. The most promising systems are being flight tested in an F-84G, especially adapted to accommodate the periscopes. The first system subjected to flight tests was the Scanoptics periscope. 
The second instrument to be flight tested was the periscope produced by the Bosch and Lahm Optical Company. This also utilizes a single optical system of lenses, but it's of the variable magnification type. The image can be adjusted to one and one half times normal size. Considerable freedom of head movement is possible. The overall length of the experimental unit is 68 inches. In order to simulate as much as possible the cockpit vision in an XF-103, the canopy of the test F-84G was masked with opaque tape. A small viewing area was left on each side of the canopy. The periscope is so designed that the field of view through the canopy lines up with the field of view through the scope, thus providing the proper reference. This system has been tested by 17 pilots in over 45 flights. It has proven to be a reliable means for takeoff, flying, and landing the test airplane under day visual conditions. Other optical systems being developed by Eastman Kodak and Colesman Instrument Company are presently being evaluated. ARDC is currently beginning a fabrication program to construct three XF-103s. The first of these is to be completed in late 1956.